Starting out, we're looking at the animated poster template. So if we restart this, we can see what happens. First, these little dots fade on and off, and then this shape appears. And it looks like you can see through this poster, but this poster doesn't actually render in the scene. This is just a preview of what it's looking for. If we select this target tracker, you can see in the texture, this poster is there. So if we remove that, you can still kind of see through this checkerboard. That means it doesn't render, it's just looking for this image. So what's going on here? The target tracker is looking for this image in the camera in order to do something. And what it does is up to us. So in this case, it triggers all this animation. So let's look in the patch editor and see what's going on. First, we have some instructions up here. And let me just change this to the iPhone 8. Reset it just so we're kind of reestablished here. So for the instructions, we have a runtime feeding into two offsets, and each of those go into a less than five. And if either of those are true, then this becomes true, and the instruction is visible. And then down here, we can see if the front camera is active, this is true, and it sends this flip camera token into here. So if we switch this camera, we can see it says switch camera here at the bottom. And after five seconds, that should disappear. In my opinion, this is a little extra for what's needed because if you're using the wrong camera, I would imagine you just want that visible all the time. So let's just change this so it's always flip camera. And we can delete this entirely. And then I think if we have the front camera on, that's when we want to tell the user to switch it around. So let's just drag that all the way into this device and delete literally all this stuff. So now when this front camera is active, it says flip camera or switch camera over here. And that makes sense because you're not going to use this effect on the wrong camera. It's just not going to work, at least according to how this is set up. So this is a lot simpler. It uses way fewer nodes. And it's just more efficient that way. And I'm not sure why it keeps zooming in. Every time I reset it, it zooms back. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, so we clean that up. Over here, we have a loop animation feeding into a transition and then into the Y rotation of this isosahedron. And how I would set this up is just using a runtime, multiplying that by, let's see, we have a duration of three seconds. So every three seconds, it rotates 360 degrees. So we're going to multiply this by 360 over 3. So every one second, it should rotate 120 degrees. And then we can pack this into the y-axis. And well, it's going the wrong direction, but the speed should be the same. We can just change this to a negative. And now I believe we have the same functionality. The main difference here is this value you can see goes between zero and negative 359. And so it snaps back to zero instead of rotating all the way around. But with this technique using runtime, this number continues to increase or decrease infinitely. And so you don't have any popping back and forth and you don't have to worry about using a weird value like negative 359 when you just want it to be a 360 rotation. So. It's functionally the same, but this is how I would do it, because it makes more sense. In the real world, you would have something just continuing to rotate and increase that rotation value. And now for the actual juice of this thing. So we have a target finder, and a target selector, and then the fixed target tracker. And this is kind of like the face tracker. It makes these three patches that essentially give you these values, position, scale, rotation, and found which if you click on it, you can see is a Boolean. So now if the back camera is active and this is found, this being the image here, both of these have to be true and then it spits out a Boolean. So if either of these is false, this is gonna be false. So once that happens, we delay that for two seconds. And then after those two seconds, this gets input into this pulse, 
with con which converts this boolean into a pulse when it's turned on and a pulse when it's turned off. And pulses are like triggers. It's like a shot of energy. So when it's turned on, this animation starts playing. And the animation progress is always between 0 and 1. And so that gets fed into this transition. In this transition, it takes a 0 to 1 for the progress and goes between these values of 0 and 1. But the main difference here is it adds a curve, so it smooths out this value here. Because currently, the animation only goes linearly. It goes from 0 to 1 over 1.5 seconds. So using this transition, it'll smooth it out using this quadratic curve, essentially. And all of these are just different intensities of smoothness, with these bottom doing a few different styles of animation that are a little more animated. So all of this basically just to get a single number that goes from 0 to 1 in a smooth way once this is recognized. And now we have two different things going on here. For this anchor mat, this is attached to this blue shape. And we have a value of 1 here, and then the value from the transition, which is 0 to 1. And so when it starts, it's going to be at 0. So if we restart this and pause it really quick, this is transparent because this value is 0. And this is multiplying by 1, but 1 times 0 is 0. So the diffuse texture of this anchor mat is 0, 0, 0, 0. We could change this to a vector 4 to see it more clearly. So we have our R, G, B, and A. But because all of these are 0, including the alpha, this is completely transparent. So it's totally clear here. And as we play, and if we pause it here, it's still a little transparent because these are not quite to 1 yet. And then after another moment, everything is to 1, and this is fully opaque. Well, actually, it's not totally opaque because the actual alpha in here is set to 95%. If we set it to 100, it should be opaque. Now we have kind of an opposite behavior down here where this number, when we start, goes from 0 to 1. So we're subtracting at first 0 and then 1 from this. So this value starts at 1 and then goes to 0 because we're subtracting instead of multiplying. So that takes this opacity and it'll start at 1 and then after that 2 second delay it'll zoom back down to 0. And we can see if we pause it right at the right time these little dots here and that's the thing that's fading from 1 to 0. And all of that happens inside of this little group here. If we open this up, there's a lot of stuff going on, and we're not going to dive into it, because even this dots patch here has its own cluster of, <laughs> of patches. And that has to do with SDF shading and texturing, which we'll cover much later in this course. But for now, you can just imagine this is like a texture that's doing some fancy stuff behind the scenes. So that's pretty much it. The target tracker is just looking for an image. And when it sees it, you can grab this Boolean and then pretty much do anything with it. You can convert it to a pulse. You can have it trigger something, trigger visibility. It's pretty much limitless.